Right. Good morning, everyone. First, before I start, I just wanted to state up front that seismic surveys have never been proven to cause stranded animals in South Africa. It may be because we don't have the experts in this country to either disprove or um, to prove, prove this, um, but we also do not have a single data point for South Africa in terms of seismic survey impacts. So, in 2015, I got to the office and I had an email with the subject line, a deaf whale is a dead whale. It was sent to me by an NGO. And just to give you some background as to why the seismic surveys have become a bit of a problem or an issue on the KZN coast um, is because in December 2015, some seismic surveys were taking place off the KZN coast. It was going to be for six months of the year. The seismic surveys um, of, um, in May of 2016, the seismic surveys hadn't, um, had, hadn't been finalized. So there was an application for an extension of, of the permit and the Petroleum Agency of South Africa allowed the extension into June and July, which happens to be the peak whale migration period. In July 2016, two whales, two humpback whales washed up in Imtanzini within a week of each other. The press contacted me and said, well, what do you think of this? And I said, well, the whale population is increasing in South Africa. Uh, the moratorium on whaling has only been since the 1970s. So we're having an increase in the population and natural mortality is something that we can expect. So I certainly wasn't alarmed. By October, we had 13 cetaceans strand on the KZN coast. By the end of 2016, 18 cetaceans had washed up and this was the highest recorded number of stranded animals on the east coast of South Africa. <laughs> the problem was is that some of these animals had somewhat peculiar injuries. This beaked whale, a uh, deep water species, came up with some barotrauma injuries, basically meaning that it came up at speed from, from the depths. We also had some animals washing up with broken jaws. Um, we see broken jaws in stranded animals all the time, but this particular animal had two broken jaws, which means that it slammed into something, and we can only assume it was disorientated. Then in October, we had the first mass stranding in KZN that's ever been recorded in Isimangalizo. These pilot whales also um, offshore deep, deep water animals. So then we started to question, well, um, why all of a sudden are we getting these seismic surveys occurring now? We've, um, over the East Coast since the 1960s, we've had about 26 seismic surveys occur. Um, but then it occurred to us that Operation Pakisa was in full swing. I'm not going to go into Operation Pakisa, but the one particular aim of um, the oil and gas lab is to drill 30 exploration wells off the South African coast within a decade. I'm not a geophysicist, but I'm going to try and attempt to explain to you how a seismic survey works. So you have your vessel and your sound source just um, behind the vessel. Uh, this the sound source is generated from compressed air and uh, they, they um, in sequences of 12, from 12, 24 or um, 48 air guns. And basically what happens um, is you have this configuration um, of these, the air guns over on just behind, you've got these receivers um, trailing behind the, the vessel and this can be up to 12 kilometers in length. So the, the air is, the compressed air is, um, creates these sound waves, goes into the sea floor, and then the acoustic receivers or the streamers uh, receive the data. And the data is processed and captured in these 3D images. And then from these three, the 3D images, you can see 
if there is oil and gas or hydrocarbons underneath the surface of the sea floor. So what we know is that the ocean is naturally a noisy environment. There's physical noise, like wind and rain, ice falling into the sea, uh, natural cracking and shifting in the crust. And then there's also biological noise. So marine animals use noise for a variety of, of reasons. They use it to communicate, they use it in reproduction, in aggression, in territorial fighting, they use it when they're competing for food, in orientation and navigation. Um, they use it to stun prey or to find prey, in uh, warning or protection. And then, of course, the most common is your whale song or your, your um, echolocation. Now, I would encourage anybody who ever goes and swims in the sea, just for one moment, put your head under and listen. It's particularly noisy. But there is also this growing concern of anthropogenic noise in the oceans. And it's been found that over the last 40 odd years, the noise has increased by 10 to 12 decibels. It's a result of commercial, um, an, an increase in commercial um, traffic, um, increase in drilling and dredging, the um, active sonar, the, uh, more and more navies are um, using active sonar, multi-beam bathymetric surveys, um, research vessels are doing um, a lot more um, uh, bathymetric to find uh, depth gradients um, along coastlines, variety of explosions. This includes uh, dynamite fishing off the east coast of South Africa, um, east coast of Africa. Acoustic deterrent devices. These are things like um, the shark net pingers, um, pingers to prevent. Um, a variety of predators in fish farming and aquaculture facilities, and then of course the exploration using seismic surveys, which I'm going to talk about today. So just to give you an idea, anthropogenic noise is occurring between 2 hertz and 200 um, kilohertz, and it happens to be the same frequency as, um, as the animals, the marine animals. So there are there are two ways uh, seismic surveys can affect um, animals. You have your direct effects. In ter uh, for example, uh, you get hearing impairment. This is your temporary or your permanent uh, threshold shift. Uh, uh, if you go into a club or a pub and you uh, listen to music for a, an extended period of time, you walk out of that club and you know your hearing is not, not great, but the following morning it's fine. That's temporary threshold shift, or, temp or TTS. But if you're a DJ and you do this as a, as a career, you have permanent um, threshold shift. There's also physiological changes um, as, um, in, uh, uh, due to stress responses, so the enzymes and the hormone levels are changing, and then there's uh, soft tissue damage. There's also indirect effects. For example, the prey um, is, is being impacted on um, there is uh, changes in behavior, so some animals are avoiding areas. There's a change in vocalization, so the marine animals are not using the same uh, sounds um, to communicate and to, um, to, to uh, reproduce. And then there's masking, so you've got an additional noise in the system, so it's obliterating the sounds of interest that the marine animals need. So I'm just going to go through some of the um, groups of animals that are um, affected. The most common are your marine, your marine mammals, your dolphins and your whales. In the Gulf of Mexico, uh, they've found that the fin and the blue whales have altered their song or have stopped singing altogether during seismic surveys. They found that subtle reactions are quite hard to detect in some whales. For example, the sperm whales, they, um, they click at the same uh, rate or at the same decibel level as a seismic survey. But what they have found is that um, some uh, whales don't avoid the seismic survey area at all, but they swim towards it. Um, however, they have recorded reduced swimming and foraging effort, as well as um, a reduction in prey, attempt, uh, prey capture attempts, attempts um, up to 19% lower. In terms of your seals, 
they found that uh, the, the grey and the harbour seals, bearing in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that all this data is international. Um, is international literature because we don't have anything in South Africa. Uh, in terms of, for the seals, you have a change in um, this foraging behavior to transisting, so they're just moving through the areas um, where these seismic surveys are taking place. They're hauling out um, more frequently, possibly to escape the noise, and then um, they've been found to stop feeding. Turtles, a little bit more closer to home. Captive turtles have um, been found to have a reduced hearing sensitivity um, after prolonged uh, sound exposure. They've also been found to have behavior responses um, up to two kilometers from a seismic survey from the sound source itself. Fish in your sharks, there's been um, damage to the fish ears or the otoliths at distances from between 500 to several kilometers. Behavior changes, fish have been found to drop to deeper depths, they, um, they can mill in compact schools, or they just simply freeze. In terms of the fisheries, in the North Atlantic, they found that there's been um, a decrease in abundance, as well as catch rates in a host of species like your Atlantic cod, your haddock, your rockfish, herring, sand eel, and your blue whiting. Again, close to home, in Namibia, the tuna catch fishery um, complained that their, their uh, catch was reduced from just over 4,000 tons in 2011 to 650 tons in 2013. That's an 83% decline in catch. In terms of your smaller guys, giant squid in Spain, after um, some geophysical surveys were undertaken, uh, they had a mass stranding of some giant squid with massive internal injuries. The um, resource species, the snow crab in Canada, was found that the females had bruised ovaries, having huge impacts on the reproduction of these animals. The mollusks, uh, the purple diamurix and uh, the uh, paphia species showed acoustic stress with the, the levels of the glucose and the lactate and the hydrocortisone um, changing. The very, very little guys, the zooplankton, these are the guys that underpin all me marine ecosystems and they are essential. If you don't have these guys, you don't have a marine environment. In a recent study by um, Macaulay, uh, released this year in May, he found that seismic surveys have a significant mortality to zooplankton. It was initially thought that the impacts were only um, 10 meters from the sound source, but he found that it was up to 1.2 kilometers. What he also found was that all the larval krill were killed um, in, um, in the, the zone. And um, the example I like to use here is that um, the whales eat krill, so if we're killing all the krill, what are the whales going to eat? <coughs> we do have mitigation measures um, in South Africa. Um, in fact, we use the JNCC guidelines, um, and some international experts have said to me, why am I complaining we have some of the best mitigation measures in the world? The problem is, is that as more and more research is coming through, we're finding that um, the mitigation measures are inadequate and fatally flawed, as Lindy Wilgod said in 2013 at um, the, C the CBD. Just in terms of um, our mitigation measures for the whales, we have um, observers on board which uh, basically stand and look in a 500 meter radius around the, the vessel looking for whales. If they see whales, they tell them to stop the operation. They also have people listening for whales um, with hydrophones, but uh, from the Gulf of Mexico, we know that the whales are going quiet, so how do you pick up whales um, if they're not making any noises? And then the, there are soft starts, which is basically a ramp up in the sound. So um, the idea is that the animals that are in the zone are going to swim away as they hear um, the sound. 
for turtles. We don't have um, any mitigation uh, measures for sound per se, um, but they do um, try and pr prevent entanglements for, for the adult turtles. There's no mitigation measures for fish and no mitigation measures for invertebrates. So just in terms um, of the environmental plans and assessments, they do acknowledge that there are impacts um, of seismic surveys, but they rate the risks of insignificant to low in most cases. They do it species by species. They ignore the cumulative effects, um, for example, the disruptions um, in food chains or food webs. They also ignore the cascading effects, so when you've got multiple species being disturbed or impacted upon, they're not looking at the consequences. They also state that the impacts are temporary or short-term, but we know that the impacts are, being, are, are delayed and, and um, are only recorded after a period of time. If you go deaf, you don't die, away. You don't die straight away. They also acknowledge there's a disturbance or impact on critically endangered and endangered species. To me, that's blatant lack in duty of care. We also know that only 2% of whale carcasses wash ashore. 98% of the whale carcasses that um, are dying out there, uh, we do not pick them up at all. So is it too late for South Africa? Not at all. But we do need a strategic environmental assessment. We need the science and the research to be done specifically to South Africa. There is this loophole in the law um, in sections 38 and 39 uh, in the EIA regulations were repealed, which basically takes seismic surveys, uh, they are delisted seismic surveys as an activity requiring an EIA. And we also need to declare the 22 marine protected areas that have, that were, um, that have been lodged in Operation Pakisa before the mining starts, not after. Okay, I have a video that I wanted to show. Chair, have I got, have I got time? Just a minute, 63 seconds. Okay. Uh, this is an excerpt out of a documentary called Sonic Seas. I would encourage everybody to, to watch it. It is freely available on uh, YouTube. But of course now it's not playing. <laughs> 